We'll hurry up and wait him. Oh, uh, Ricky, Richard says he's waiting to be let in. You don't see him? What's the conference number? Ben said he's going to try the call. The call on the number. Yeah. The 42nd Street still pretty slammed over there. There, and everywhere I go, the signature is just lying. We were hearing today on our call about uh, shortage of um, this is median, right? The median, the median to yeah. that seems like the federal government's hijacking some of that, oh, keeping yeah. it out of the state level. Okay, we'll see. We might have access to some rapid. Who do I have on? Do I have uh, Brian and Dean and David? Um, I see Brian. I see David. I heard Wallace. Wallace, are you there? I heard from Wallace. That's right. It doesn't work very well. It's a one gene test. Yes, I'm here. Okay. Is it PRC? We, we have, uh, we have a, a forum, so. It's really just a screening tool, but it's a rapid. Let's go ahead and get started. We'll go through the motions and get when we get some other folks in, they can just join in. Um, first, um, ben. huh. uh, Ben's not here. Um, Bren, Dodd. I here. Hello. <laughs> Mary. We got Mary yet? Hello. Who who is that? Hello. Hello. This is Mr. Herrera. Ah, and there's Ricky Herrera. And uh, David. David Dunn. Okay, I'm muting myself. <laughs> okay, we got you, I think, right there. Okay. Okay, that's on with Mary trying to get her figured out. Hey, wait a minute. I just seen Ben pop up. Hello? Hey, Ben. Hey, cool. Hey, you're on my phone. You're on my phone, but. Um, I'll call you. I'll call you good. I'm just gonna leave you like that for a minute. I can. I can stay on speaker if you want me to. We'll just, we'll just do this for right now. Sure. All right, David Dunn. Did we ever find David Dunn? He's on there, but he's there. I think you're muted, David. That's gonna be too much noise, Ben. There's all kinds of stuff happening. I'm not muted. Oh, sorry about that. Did y'all get Ben come back in? All right. See you later. Yeah, Quinones was something gone without me. I felt like I was on the, oak, the right. old uh, Santa Fe Trail. I am still. David Dunn chimed in too. Okay. <clears throat> Got Wallace. <laughs> Not to everybody. I 
while we're all here. Well, after all of that and that escapade, I think we absolutely need to get Russell to pray for us. Will you join me in a prayer, please? Lord above, we thank you for today, for our time together. Thank you for blessing us to live in a country where we're free to gather and that um, we have uh, the freedom to choose our health care. Lord, we thank you for our community and for our patients. Thank you for this board. Guide us and direct us to make good decisions and let your light shine through us. Protect our families, our staff, and our patients. It's in your name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay. At Eckerd County Hospital District, we have a mission statement, and that is Medical Center System is a community-based teaching organization dedicated to providing high-quality and affordable health care to improve the health and wellness of all residents of the Permian Basin. And our vision, Medical Center Hospital System, will be the premier source for health and wellness. And our values are I for integrity, C for customer centered, A for accountability, R for respect, and E for excellence. And the conflict of interest, if anybody here has a conflict of interest on anything we're gonna be speaking about, please speak now or forever hold your peace. And also right now we'll take any public comments for anyone that might be out there. Can you unmute everybody, just in case? I can't. They have to. Oh, okay, I mean, unmute yourselves if you'd like to talk. Otherwise, we're gonna go forward. Uh, consent agenda. I've got four items on the consent agenda. If you guys have looked that over, I'll, I'll entertain a motion. David Dunn, I make a motion for approval. I second it. Richard Herrera, I second it. I have a second from Richard. Um, Mary Lou Anderson. Okay, and we'll do a roll call. Brenda. Dodd. Aye. Mary Lou, we have. Aye. Richard. Mm -hmm. Present. David Dunn. Aye. Wallace. Aye. And Don's aye. Sure. Thank you. We'll get to committee reports. Miss Dodd. The Finance Committee met today at 5 o'clock right before this meeting and we um, discussed the finance report for month ended May 31st. We approved the uh, three items on a consent agenda that's provided on this agenda. Uh, we also approved a capital expenditure request for an orthopedic surgical table and uh, Mr. Ewing provided us a bond refunding update. Um, which I believe that we'll be discussing, I think, a little bit later on in the evening. Um, there is a fifth item, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, 2021 budget tax projections. We did not discuss that in the Finance Committee meeting, um, so I would move to approve all the other things on that uh, agenda that we discussed. Have we done second? Who, who made my motion? I'm sorry, David Dunn. David Dunn, David Dunn made a motion. And, and well, uh, Mr. Chair, actually, I made the motion. David uh, seconded. I'm second. <laughs> Got a motion and a second. Uh, roll call, Bryn. Aye. Mary Lou. Aye. Richard. Present. Dave. <laughs> Say aye, you <laughs> Aye. Hey, we done? Aye. Wallace? Aye. John Allmark says aye. And I'm sure aye. we'll get to that budget tax projection. And we're on to Mr. Titham. All right, good afternoon or evening. Uh, I'll, I'll run through mine and keep those as uh, brief as possible. If you have any questions, feel free to stop me. Um, in your board packet, I've got Governor Abbott's order uh, which uh, at the time was the most current order, but it has changed recently. Uh, this order does uh, prohibit elective surgeries in all the counties on the I-35 corridor from Harris County uh, all the way up to uh, Tarrant and Fort Worth counties. That uh, order has expanded. He picked up five more counties in the valley uh, like um, Webb County, what's Laredo County in? What's Laredo? Webb is. Webb, 
right in there in the valley. Um, Steve, uh, CFO Steve and I were on a call today with THA. Uh, it is interesting to note that the surge capacity in uh, more areas is being challenged uh, right now, uh, including uh, Medical Center. For a couple of days last week, we were we were really slammed. In fact, we have uh, just today have gone off out of county diversion. That was my conversation with Dr. Davenport before this meeting. We were on diversion for all our transferring counties since last Thursday. Uh, we are still on a uh, status where we're not allowing inpatient surgeries that uh, require an overnight stay in the hospital, just because our critical care beds were filling up so fast. As you can imagine, uh, our good friend, Dr. Bora, that has given him a little bit of heartburn and um, which we're, I offered him some counseling to help us get through that. Um, but at the same time, our uh, mission there was to protect the organization, especially uh, through the holiday weekend. Uh, uh, right now, we have 40 COVID patients in the hospital. That's 4040 with a hospital census of about 172. Last Thursday, Dr. Davenport, I think we were like at 248 or 250. Does that sound about right? Yeah, I think he said yes. <laughs> um, but at the same time, um, we had to protect our staff and our um, just our, just the integrity of the safety of our patients. And there was a time where we were um, in the in the real seriously uh, the possibility of being overwhelmed and so as difficult as that decision was the out of county diversion we had to do that y'all know my history and my background that it used to be me sitting in those chairs in these rural hospitals we made a we had a regional call just to talk to everybody about that in the region i spoke to them personally several of them today just to check on them and see how they were doing but um, as of probably 10 minutes ago, our out of county diversion status is we're off of that. So we're taking in patients from out of the county, which I know will make everybody out there feel a little better tonight. Um, any questions about that? Our, our um, press conference that we have, we've gone back to three days a week on that that just kind of falls hand in hand with our volume situation um, i hope y'all are seeing those i hope you're getting some good information out of those uh, it seems that medical center has been the most steady source of information uh, since day one on this situation and we will continue to do that also in your packet i have uh, some information i thought that was interesting on the economic indicators for Odessa uh, on that sheet of paper. One thing I would draw your attention to is down at the bottom, I thought outside of the rig count, which is, you know, 352 last year and 115 this year. If you go down to the bottom of that sheet of paper, it talks about how many people are getting on airplanes in Odessa Midland and how many are coming off. Last year, there were over 52,000 that deplaned into the Permian Basin, and right now that number is just a little above 10,000. So that kind of shows you, which we all, I mean, it's no indicator we didn't already know, but um, just the travel into the Permian Basin, um, the decline in the oil and the gas market, what that has done just to the whole thing. But those, those were some indicators that our good friend Wes Burnett sent out. I thought y'all would like to see that just so when we start talking about tax rates and things like that, um, we have a complete picture of what the situation looks like. I already gave you a pretty good update on the COVID situation. Um, any questions about that uh, concerning Medical Center and our COVID situation? Anything I can answer on that? The only thing I, I have a question on how, how 
and I've already asked you about this, but I want I want to uh, get it public. So when we're sending someone out of a out of the ER, we are working off of the protocol from CDC. That's right. Which is two weeks. We su we suggested them two weeks and then two positive tests. Is that correct? That there is there is there's two guidelines, and that is one of them. That is two weeks and then two positive tests before you return to work within 24 hours. Of each okay. Day. What's the other guideline? 14 days asymptomatic. Asymptomatic. Okay. In in the treatment, maybe maybe this is better for one of our docs, but in the treatment, are the docs treating a specific line item from the CDC, like the CDC is coming out with their new stuff every week or every day, or are they treating like they know how to treat? Uh, Dr. Davenport, any comment about that? Yeah, I, I, I think each case is individualized, depending on how sick that individual is and whether or not they need to be hospitalized or not. And that's up to the clinical judgment of the physician that's evaluating that patient, whether it's in the ER or, well, and most of the patients are coming in through the emergency department. So I think that's where that comes into play. Um, certainly, you know, there's no guidelines from the CDC that say a patient have to, has to be admitted to the hospital. Most of those guidelines are going to come about for those individuals that have, are diagnosed with COVID or have been um, have been around somebody that's COVID, and so that's the idea of being at home in isolation or quarantine. Obviously, the difference between the two, but from admission standpoint to the hospital, there's no real CDC guidelines that that guide us from that standpoint. I, I was really getting more to the way what we would would prescribe or how how we would uh, send them out with information to get better for themselves. Sure, so I think those that uh, come into the hospital that, or I'm sorry, into the emergency department that, that test positive, if that be it, but are not admitted to the hospital or those that go out to 42nd clinic and are admit or are diagnosed with COVID. Again, going back to isolation and quarantine of themselves away from everybody else for 14 days monitoring their symptoms, looking for clinical symptoms that may be exacerbated, getting worse for them, shortness of breath, high fevers, um, chest pain, something that, that may more urgently need to be evaluated in the emergency department. I think that's what we're giving, the information that we're giving to those patients to monitor before they, they come back to the emergency department. But ultimately, it's going to be up to those individuals to, to monitor those symptoms. Does and, that answer and the question? So we're, so we're not we're not given a we don't have a specific guideline of what medications to use or or what medications the doctors are going to prescribe. Correct. That that was my question. That gets you. Yes, sir. Okay. Any other questions about that? Thank you for that. Good question. Uh, I will tell you, we have um, 35 staff members that have tested positive for COVID. Um, most of those are community acquired. Now, that's not 35 today. That's 35 total. Um, some of those are recovered. Some of them are active. Um, we do have one very sick um, <clears throat> staff member, and uh, she is very ill. Um, and so please keep her and her family in your prayers. I will keep you updated on that. Um, most of the staff that are ill are patient facing staff, um, but we are starting to see it pick up more like in the um, uh, purchasing department, the billing and coding department. And it's just as people are moving out and about more, there's more opportunities for them to become exposed. So, um, I think we have done a very good job at protecting our employees. Um, they have been great about wearing their uh, gear at work, their masks, their gloves. But when they get off of work or definitely out of a board meeting and they go to Chili's to the bar for a couple of hours after, that's where the exposures are happening. So um, we are starting to check temperatures twice a day 
on all employees and all visitors. Uh, the department directors will start uh, tracking those and then send those to employee help um, just as another measure to track um, our employees. And speaking of employee help, I would not be doing anybody, I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't tell you that Anita and her crew in employee help have knocked it out of the park. Yes. <clears throat> they have been unbelievable with that small department. And we've been pumping them resources, Kathy and HR, Steve, we have been pumping them resources, but they held down the fort. That's a three or four lady man, man department and doing all the contact tracing that they've done, the calls they've done, they have been rock stars in that department. And I want them and to know if they're on here, that we have told them that they have been outstanding in our uh, employee health department, helping us keep on top of this. Um, with that being said, um, I do, we were just talking with IDL earlier, the 42nd Street Clinic where most of our testing is going on. There are lines still um, wrapped around there. One of the big problems we're having right now is our local labs outside of the hospital. Last week, they notified us that they were not going to receive any new tests for 10 days, that they were stopping for 10 days. We're probably about eight or nine days into that now, but that has just delayed results. So it's possible to have somebody who tested the day before they stop go 10 days plus before they result. And so that really means that that test is probably pretty worthless 10 days later. Um, our in-house lab, excellent. They're doing as, as good a job as they can possibly do. That crew in the lab and in purchasing has done a great job keeping our test numbers available up where they are beg, borrowing, stealing, bartering, whatever they can do to get us protective equipment for our staff and testing um, kits and median for our patients. They have been just really incredible. Um, so any other questions about the COVID uh, situation before I move forward? Thank you for your support. Um, we know uh, y'all get a lot of noise just like we do, but we appreciate y'all support. And um, this crew has done an amazing job uh, keeping us on the front of that from the housekeeping to the people who draw the labs to the people who uh, process it to the nurses. I walked through the ER the other day and honestly, I felt like I took my life into my own hands. And those people are brave at what they're doing. And her, uh, they're, it's her, nothing less of heroic to be in front of that all day long, every day. Um, and uh, if you see any of those nurses or you have a chance to, to send anything or to those folks, I would tell you to do that. Uh, because they need all the encouragement they can get because they are on the front line all day, every day. Under, under the ad reports, uh, just Mallory's regional service is in there. Uh, she's done a great job. We're really watching where she travels, of course. But anytime we need a message to go out to the region, she's getting that out for us. Her report is in there. Um, it's pretty um, self-explanatory. Um, on the number E, I'm going to skip it for a minute. We'll come back to it. Number F, health sure insurance update. It's, it's time for us to uh, uh, renew our insurance policies. And we have vetted those out and we have uh, brought those uh, back in and have done some good research on those. Uh, some of those are going to stay the same with the company. Some of those are going to move to some new companies, one based on um, coverage availability, one based on um, premium, just the cost of the premium, uh, and others are going to be stay the same just because uh, some of them are the only game in town and um, we can't get anybody else to pick up that coverage. But we did make some big moves. Uh, some of those moves we did make will bring our insurance into the state of Texas with a company called Texas Health uh, Hospital Insurance Exchange, better known as THIE. I'm very familiar with that company. Um, they are Texas based. They are located in Austin um, and they are a uh, insurance company that 
is multi-state, uh, provide hospital insurance, uh, professional liability, auto, automobile insurance. One um, interesting conversation we had in this was what's known as terrorism insurance, <laughs> which is another line of, of uh, insurance that is available. Uh, last year, we carried a uh, ins uh, terrorism insurance policy. It cost us $25,000. This year, um, we are not going to carry uh, terrorism insurance, and I will explain that very simple, that for the terrorism insurance to kick in, it has to be uh, labeled and identified by the Justice Department as an act of terrorism. So it has to meet that threshold. Secondly, that act of terrorism has to cause more than $5 million worth of damage during that act of terrorism. So there's two thresholds. One, it has to be labeled an act of terrorism. Two, it has to have $5 million or more worth of damage done to that. Um, we did do some research with our friends in um, uh, law enforcement, just about what the level was in West Texas, what our exposure rate was. After visiting with Brad, um, our chief of police, um, it, it just became clear that we thought uh, to pick up that policy, the 25,000, I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but at the same time, getting it, to, getting it labeled an act of terrorism is not easy to do. Um, there's certain thresholds you have to jump through. So even heaven forbid there was an event, there's no guarantee that that policy would cover anyway. Um, but other than that, all of our policies stayed the same uh, as far as the amount of deductible and the amount of coverage. Um, our hell policy, like for a hell storm, that's going to be that's our biggest one because you can imagine how many square feet of roofs we cover uh, in Ector County. That's a big one. Um, but um, the roof, I think, in our biggest storm. When do you think that was, Matt? Back when? It was 2017, I think, in the spring. Yeah. And our deductible on that is five million dollars. The, the deductible on. But you got now that number sounds big. You start thinking about how many roofs we have in this town, uh, and if there was a hailstorm that wiped out the whole town, we would surpass five million dollars in no time at all. So, um, but I just wanted to report to y'all that we have gone through that. Do we need a motion on that? Do you think, or do you think we're good to go? Because it's a renewal of the policy. Yeah. All right. Any questions about the insurance? Um, Dang. Pretty simple, a lot of work, a lot of meetings about meetings and that. If you ever can't sleep at night, I'll send you over some insurance pre premiums to read through. It's sure to uh, put you to sleep uh, for at least a couple hours. Uh, the next item I have is our AMR contract. This is our ambulance contract. Um, it is looking great. It's on track. Any update on that, Steve, or uh, casting anything? Yeah, we have uh, sent a draft back to them that we revised today, and uh, we should, you know, be going back and forth, and getting it wrapped up. Uh, we're about to also send uh, a lease agreement on the Rock House. Uh, we're getting with Matt, and we'll come up with a, uh, a fair market value number to use for our lease amount. Yeah, I didn't just want this to fall off the agenda without y'all seeing it once it's finalized. So I'll keep it on there another month or so till we get it all done. But I just wanted to update y'all. If you remember, that's our first call ambulance service on the ambulance um, transfer out. Uh, Mr. President, on the sale of the ECHD property, I will save those comments for after executive session so we can discuss that uh, in executive session. Then we'll come out and I'll have some action for us to take after the executive session with that. Okay. 
And if uh, that's it, that concludes my report, unless there's any questions. Any questions, anybody? Okay, let's go into executive session so y'all can call again. Mm -hmm. Doug, do you got the executive session number to call in? I do not. I really probably can give mine right now or after y'all come out into public session. I need that number. Yeah, can y'all text it to us? Yeah, we'll text it to you. Um, can can, can we get a text on that? Yeah, we'll text it to you. Doug, well, uh, I, I, I second that motion for a text. <laughs> <laughs> I'll God, y'all are getting. That. Ricky, go back. Y'all are, get, are getting boring in y'all's older years. All right, I'll be waiting for that number. For that number. Russell, not text Yeah, yeah, you can text the executive number. You can. Okay. Uh, Doug, yes, we we probably.